Hi, another recent release that I've watched is Fool's Paradise, the comedy uh, satire of Hollywood written, directed by and starring Charlie Day. Day is not necessarily a lead uh, actor in film. I think this is his first lead role, but he's best known for his TV work as one of the creators and stars of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, one of the US's longest running sitcoms in which he and several others play the uh, owners of a dive bar in Philadelphia getting up to all kinds of bizarre scrapes in a series described as being like Seinfeld on crack. Um, Day's feature debut here is about a man with the mind of a dog, uh, effectively, uh, who is um, in her incarcerated in a mental hospital, but released because they can't afford to keep him anymore, and just let uh, to walk onto the streets, where he is discovered by a movie producer who realises he is the absolute spitting image of a troublesome English actor who's starring in a film about Billy the Kid. Our main character, whose name is mistakenly assumed to be Latte Pronto after the producer's continuous call for coffee, uh, winds up taking over the role from the actor when he, um, in a uh, method investigation of suicide, accidentally hangs himself, and then becomes a huge star, experiencing the highs and lows of being a Hollywood celebrity, even though at no point in the film does he actually speak, and appears to, as I say, have the mind of a toddler. Um, it's a knockoff of Peter Sellers being there. While that film was more about politics and American society as a whole, this is confined solely to being a satire on the vapidity of Hollywood and celebrity culture. But it is so stale and so unimaginative and so unoriginal in its perceptions. Its portrayal of a movie set, for example, is like something out of the 30s, uh, when this is supposed to be, be a film with a present-day setting. Um, it's extremely weak and extremely lazy. Um, the bulk of the film was apparently shot five years ago, um, but the first cut screened within the industry did not get a very strong reception. And Guillermo del Toro, a good friend of Day's from having worked on um, Pacific Rim, and del Toro returning the favour by guest starring in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, gave him notes and persuaded him to rewrite and reshoot a large chunk of the film, which uh, happened after lockdown. And eventually the film was released earlier this spring and absolutely disappeared without trace. There is a very impressive supporting cast, um, Kate Beckinsale, uh, Ken Jeong, John Malkovich has a brief cameo role. Uh, Ray Liotta, in I believe his last film, plays the producer. Um, but it's 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 so unfunny for a satire. And Day's attempt at forging a Peter Sellers or Buster Keaton-like image for himself as a screen comedian doesn't work, because the central character, whose real name is never given, is so inconsistent. Um, the character of Chance the Gardener in being there is perfectly formed, and we have a perfect sense of who and what that character is. That he has a person, that he is a person with no interior life, with no real self other than what he copies from television. There is no uh, source element for Day's character, and as a result, there's nothing for him to ground the behaviour in. There's no context for his personality. We're told early on. Uh, when he's introduced, that his condition might be the result of some past trauma, but that's never elaborated on. We never find out anything about him. Um, and he could simply be a, a holy fool in the style of a, a Buster Keaton or a Charlie Chaplin type character. But it's so weakly acted and so inconsistent in terms of performance that there's never any ground on which to build what that character is supposed to be. Everyone simply reads into him what they want to see, which is exactly what happens in being there. And while that film is a perfectly modulated masterpiece of comedy, satire, um, intelligent uh, dissection of society, drama, tone, and astonishing central performance by Peter Sellers, here we have really not much more than a vanity project for Day, who is works so well in the ensemble uh, he has on television, but here as the centre of attention, writing, directing and starring in a big budget feature, he is completely lost. And the result is a comedy with no jokes, to be honest, a satire with no teeth, 
um, an absolutely antiquated set of targets and really uh, something that I couldn't help feeling was a complete waste of everyone's time.